Hey everybody, welcome to Dad, Daughters, and Drinks, where you'll always get at least two of those three. Today you've got me, the Margarita Kid. I am drinking a Michter's Small Batch Rye, one of my go-tos for important events. And this one is a special request um, by a band called Coheed and Cambria. Uh, it's called In Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth 3 from Live at the Star Room Starland Ballroom. Sorry, I have my glasses on so I can't see what it says. Um, I don't know why it's number three. I don't know why I'm watching number three and not numbers one and two. I don't know what's wrong with them. I mean, for all I know, they don't exist. I know nothing about this band. I've heard the name before, but I don't know if I've heard any of their music. If I have, I'm drawing a blank on it. So for all practical purposes, I have not. Um, but we're going to get into this. It's an eight-minute song. Uh, which I've learned usually means there's probably some sort of a story that goes along with it. Um, maybe not, you know, like a complete perfect narrative or anything, but there's usually some kind of a, uh, a story to follow. Um, and so I've got the lyrics pulled up in case I'm having trouble understanding them, um, because if it's a story, I'm going to obviously want to kind of follow what's going on. Uh, if you haven't watched my stuff before, my reactions... I am somebody who will pause to talk about what I'm seeing, what I'm thinking, maybe rewind to make sure I catch a lyric that maybe I missed. Um, so if you don't want to see that, then thanks for watching, um, but you probably won't want to watch much further. All right, In Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth 3 from Live at the Starland Ballroom. Here we go. Thank you. So I dig the opening a lot. Uh, it's kind of that nice transition. That opening section was was really nice. Um, and then when it kind of went into the distorted stuff, I think I could still hear that it was kind of happening. It was just, you know, there's a lot more going on. Um, I think based on just the first line that he sang, I'm probably going to have to read the lyrics. I didn't uh, understand a word of what he said, uh, although admittedly I only listened to like five words. But... Uh, I'll give it another shot, but I think I'm going to have to read the lyrics on this one. No closed caption, so we'll just go back to it. And these guys are pretty tight, too. Sorry, I didn't mean to stop again, but... Sorry, I'm just taking a second to process these lyrics. Uh, these are the kind of lyrics that if I don't know them, I'm not going to understand what he's saying when he sings them. But if I know them, then they're going to seem super clear to me. Uh, so I'm just having to take a second to look at these because uh, they seem kind of heavy. Uh, Victim to our father's lost war, restless children sit and mourn the graves of those they've never seen before. Will they be... Okay, I guess we haven't got to that part yet, so I'm going to read ahead.
So that part, man your own jackhammer, man your own battle stations, will have you dead pretty soon. That's an interesting set of lyrics because it, uh, you know, a lot of times you think of, let's say, the government, right? This is almost sounding like it might be kind of a anti-war uh, song, you know, a little bit more verbose than War Pigs kind of thing, but it sounds like it might have the same feeling. I haven't quite got there yet. Uh, but the way it talks about it in the beginning of the, the kids mourning at the graves, they've no, those they've never seen before, will they be buried here? So I don't, I don't know if this is just kind of a... And then what happened about the jackhammers, man, your battle stations. That sounds like it's the government trying to tell people what to do, uh, and they're going to use you, right? The jackhammers makes it sound like that's like kind of non-war, we're going to use you, you know, down to the bone. Uh, battle stations will also, you know, throw you in wars if we need to, right? We're going to use you however we need to in order to, you know, use you up and make sure that we can, you know, progress society in whatever way the, you know, powers that be decide. And then, you know, I keep going back to the beginning about the kid in the graves. Uh, will they be buried here? So it's, I don't know if they're trying to say in some way that the government is, you know, trying to encourage them to view all of this as a positive thing, uh, which I think in the you know in the old days people did kind of look at it that way, right? You kind of had the soldiers or the warriors; they were fighting for freedom, uh, and then as weapons grew more powerful, uh, you know, kind of in World War One when you started having you know. Uh, chlorine gas and uh, I think tanks were really that was the first war that that was used in uh, maybe there were some early planes but I don't, I don't think so uh, but I'm not a, a history buff by any means but uh, there was a poem I remember from when I was a kid I mean the poem didn't come out when I was a kid that's when I heard it called Dolcet de Coronas Pro Patria Mori uh, or maybe just Dolcet de Coronas was the name of the poem but it basically, I think it translates to it is good and honorable to die for your country. Uh, and it was basically about that, right? It, you tell people that it's great and glorious and they want to do it. And then uh, once they get there, they realize just how horrible it is. And so I'm wondering if this is kind of where we're going with this one. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm totally way off on this. But this is where my head's at at the moment. Let's keep going. Go back. I'm also wondering, where is the singer from? Um, he's singing with a pretty heavy accent, but it's not anything that I quite recognize. I don't know if it's, you know, he's just, you know, let's say American, but he's singing in a, a different way, or if he's from somewhere else and English isn't his first language and it's coming out a little more than it might. Some, some people that don't speak English very well or maybe it's the second language, they can sing it in a way that they sound completely native. Uh, but this guy's, he's got something going on with his accent that I can't quite place. Just real quick, uh, if you've watched any of my reactions, you've heard me talk about how it seems like everybody these days is using more than four string basses. Uh, so it looks like, I don't know if this is an older video or if it's just uh, some people that have old school rock, you know, kind of gear, but it's nice to see a, a four string bass again. It's been a while since I've seen one of those in my reactions.
and, and I'm just gonna, I haven't talked too much about the music. Like I'm, I'm really digging the music uh, and these guys are really tight. But the lyrics so far have been what have, have captivated me the most. So that, that's why I've spent the most time talking about those. waiting to talk about that last verse because in the lyrics that I'm reading there was one more line that would have finished it off uh, so I was waiting for him to sing that but he, he didn't and so maybe it's coming a little bit later but uh, this verse is kind of brutal right and, and so far I'm still thinking that where I was going with the lyrics is, is still kind of seeming like that's the case and in this one where he's talking about I'll do anything to make you happy here you tell me that you're proud of me. Uh, I'll kill anything. I'll cut the throats of babies. I mean, that's brutal. Uh, but it does kind of go to the, you know, brainwashing that happens in a lot of military settings where you're forced to dehumanize your enemies in order to be able to do brutal things and actually win wars. Uh, And I can't tell here, the first couple lines almost makes it sound like it's familial. Like he's saying, because you know, a lot of times you have generational military families, we'll say. And so the person saying, I'll do anything, I want to make you happy, I want to make you proud of me, right? That's the kind of stuff you say to, you know, family members, right, who've probably been in the military. Uh, and then when you say, for them, I'll kill anything, I'll break their hearts, I'll do all these things, right? Uh, that almost sounds like he's telling his family that I'll do for them, which I'm assuming is kind of the government, country, things like that, uh, whatever I have to do to make sure that we come out on top, uh, just to hear you say, I love you too, All right? So this sounds like this is somebody who's really looking for some sort of approval from the family and doing these things uh, in kind of a war setting seems to be the, I don't know if it's the only method of, only avenue of making that happen, but it certainly seems to be the, the primary one in this person's head. Into that, I think this is what they played in the opening. Compositional structure of this song. Uh, it's kind of got the same foundation, but 
as the time's going on, they're adding more layers of things to to keep it interesting, right? Uh, a lot of different kind of like guitar, um, uh, not exactly melodies or fills or things, but you know, just layers of playing that go on top of it to 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 keep it fresh. It's pretty cool. children really understand the things you did to them this is making me think of that song what the heck song is that dun, 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 dun. the one that they used in that where the wild things are uh, commercial I don't think it was in the movie what the heck's the name of that song Wake Up. Uh, wake Up by... Uh, I can't think of the name of the band right now. Uh, but that was the song I was trying to think of. That, that lyric kind of makes me think of that. It's, it's, a lot of that's about you know screwing kids up uh, when they're little. Uh, maybe in a different way than here, but that's just what the lyric made me think of. That's an interesting lyric. We were one among the fence. I almost wonder if that's referring to like a human wall in like a battle or something. Um, maybe it means something totally different. I could be totally off on all this, but so far it's still working for me. It sounds like there's some sort of a musical transition happening here. First off, if you're the band, you just got to love it when the crowd jumps in like that. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And I love the fact that uh, there was that one dude you saw that kind of jumped up. I don't know if it was on somebody's shoulders and started crowd riding. And he made it all the way to the front. I saw the bouncers kind of having to pick him up off the edge of the crowd and drop him down. So good for him for, for uh, using the crowd to his favor. That dude. You know, I missed a good joke at the beginning, which was I didn't know that Slash could sing. Uh, I'm like 20 minutes too late on that. Damn it.
crowd goes wild. Man, that was a that was a good tune. That you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of different styles lately that I hadn't really listened to before. Uh, a lot of international rock and metal things um, from Finland, Japan, uh, just a lot of different places. So this was really one of the first songs I've listened to recently that was kind of going back to like an old school heavy rock that I, you know, kind of largely grew up with. Um, and I really liked it. Like I said, the band was really tight. Uh, all the guitar stuff that they were doing was really, really solid. I really enjoyed it. Um, the lyrics were like super deep. This wasn't like kind of a fluff song. These are guys that had something to say. I don't exactly understand the title in relation to what the song was about. I might be able to work it out. Something poetic, I'm sure. Uh, and you know, me and poetry don't mix too well necessarily. But anyway, yeah, this was this was good stuff. Uh, the guy's singing style in terms of like the way he was pronouncing words. I, I was wondering where he was from, but I don't think that would be like a foreign accent thing. I think it's just kind of how he's singing. But I don't know. Let me know if you know in the comments. And if you have a, if you actually know what the song's about, if I got close or if I was super far away, you know, maybe the bands said what it's about in interviews or whatever or maybe nobody knows and it's completely up for interpretation but i'm interested to hear what other people think about it as well and if you do know i'd like to know that as well um go ahead and drop it in the comments or comments on anything else and if you have any other songs that you want me to react to whether it's this band similar band something completely different i am all for it in reality it doesn't even need to be music i'll react to anything uh, but that i think is it for this Thanks everybody for watching, and as always, have a great day. Thanks.